Back when I was a little kid, probably the late 50s or early 60s, there was a book that I used to love to read and reread. And the author, compiler really, was a guy named Art Linkletter, who probably most of you have no recollection of or know nothing about. But he was a big guy on TV and in publishing back in the day, him and Bennett Cerf. And the book that I loved to read and would reread all the time was a book called Kids Say the Darndest Things, because anybody who has had children, I've had two, they do say the darndest things. But I've been thinking about that book lately, but not with reference to children, with reference to progressives. Because I've concluded, watching what's been going on the last couple of years, that it's not kids who say the darndest things. It's progressives who say and do the darndest things. This morning, I was reading an article in, uh, the, on the website of Minnesota Public Radio, and I couldn't believe it. It just, it just literally blew my mind. I couldn't believe what I was reading. I mean, the, the inability of progressives to understand the impact of their own actions and to understand the fact that there's this thing called the internet seems to just have escaped them. And I really can't understand what was going on. Now, with regard to this article, let me give a, 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 a an assist to Glenn Reynolds on his Instant Pundit uh, website, which I'll, I'll link below if any of you are not familiar with it already, you should be. Uh, because that's where I, I found this piece and the other two pieces that I'll be talking about. So let's look at the first piece, which is the, the third in a series of articles. Then I'll go back and look at the first and the second, because they're really amazing. This is the article I'm talking about. It's uh, today's edition, uh, Minnesota Public Radio News website. You see the address up here. And the title is, With Violent Crime on the Rise in Minneapolis, City Council Asks, Where Are the Police? Where indeed? Where might the police be? And it goes on about this meeting where the residents were upset. Residents are asking, where are the police, said Jamal Osman, newly elected council member of Ward 6. He said he's already been inundated with complaints from residents that calls for the police aren't being answered. That is the only public safety option they have at the moment. MPD, Minnesota Police Department. They rely on MPD and they are saying that they are nowhere to be seen, Osman said. Nowhere to be seen. I wonder why they're nowhere to be seen in Minneapolis. But let's, let's read on here. Just months after leading an effort that would have defunded the police department. You remember that? Defund the police department. City council members at Tuesday's work session pushed Chief Medaria Arredondo, who I might add is a, a, a black policeman, or certainly a policeman of color, to tell them how the department is responding to the violence. Look at these statistics. The number of reported crimes compared to 2019, is up. More people have been killed in the city in the first nine months of 2020 than were slain in all of last year. Property crimes, burglaries, auto thefts are also up. Incidents of arson have increased 55% over the total at this point in 2019. Arson. Arson. Anybody seen arson on the news? Maybe if you watch Fox, but if you watch MSNBC, CNN? Nah. No, these are mostly peaceful protests. Council President Lisa Bender, now you may remember who she was, and we'll go back and we'll look at her, because she was the leader in the defund the police movement there. She wanted to get rid of the police, as it says, who was among, the leading, among those leading the call to overhaul the department, suggested that officers were being defiant. Her constituents say officers on the street have admitted that they're purposely not arresting people or committing crimes. Now, anybody who's dealt with police, and my father was a cop, and I knew a lot of cops, one of the reasons they're not arresting people or committing crimes is because what happens when they do? The liberal DA there is letting them go. They send them in, they do all the paperwork, they show up, and they're released without bail, and they're back on the street the next night. This is going on in Portland, it's going on in Seattle, it goes on in New York, it goes on in every big city run by progressive Democrats. So they don't try to do anything with these people after they're arrested, and now they're surprised that the cops aren't even bothering to arrest them. Duh. I mean, it, it, did they ever think these things through? This is not new, Bender said, but it's very concerning. Of course it's concerning, but it's completely understandable. Why should they 
arrest people who are just going to be released by the DA. If you're not going to be prosecuted, what's the point of arresting people who are back out in the street? Because if you do arrest them, what happens? Things could go wrong. And who's going to get accused of doing wrong? The cops. The cop will get in trouble. So not only do you have to do an hour or two of paperwork for everybody you arrest, you have to run the risk of, in the course of arresting them, you may be charged with a crime. And you go through all that, and if you do arrest them and you don't get charged with a crime, then the next day they're back out on the street because they've been released. Don't these people understand what their own policies are doing? But the constituents are feeling, quote, terrorized, unquote. By whom? Peaceful protesters? How can peaceful protesters terrorize a community? Does that make any sense to you? This is an article from uh, June, June 8th, 2020. Again, Minnesota uh, Public Radio News. Protesters call for defunding police. What does that mean? And it's got a big picture here, defund the police. Protesters are pushing to defund the police over the killing of George Floyd and other black Americans killed by law enforcement. Their chant has become a rallying cry and a stick for President Donald Trump to use on Democrats as he portrays them as soft on crime. Correctly soft on crime. What does defund the police mean? And then it goes through all this, you know, garbage about what it really means, which is, you know, what it means. Defund the police. And we got Cory Booker, Jersey Democrat, Karen Bass, California, who's a, you know, Castro lover. Uh, Trump seizing on the slogan, pouncing. They love it when, the, you know, the Republicans pounce. Bill de Blasio, Garcetti, Minneapolis City Council member sent a tweet on Thursday. That the city would, quote, dramatically rethink how we approach public safety and emergency response. Quote, we are going to dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. Dismantle, not just defund, dismantle, Jeremiah Ellison wrote. And when we're done, we're not simply going to glue it back together. He did not explain what would replace the police department. And it goes on here. The majority of the members of city council said that they support disbanding the city's police department. Nine of the council's 12 members appeared with activists at a rally in a park Sunday afternoon and vowed to end policing the city as it currently knows it. It is clear that our community, our system, now this is from Lisa Bender, remember of a council president we talked about in the last article. It is clear that our system of policing is not keeping our community safe. Our efforts at incremental reform have failed, period. Well, is disbanding the police that as they're doing it, is that making people safer? If you look at the statistics in the previous article, clearly it's not. This isn't working. This is June. It's only September. And it's already evidence that's amply available to these morons that it's not working. But who are they looking at to blame? Themselves? No. You know, progressives never accept responsibility for their actions. It must be that damned police chief of color. It must somehow be his doing and those damned cops. They're the ones who are responsible for what's going on. It's not progressives. It's not the progressive DA who releases everybody. It can't be any of their policies. It must be, see, the police are just, just terrible. Good reason to get rid of them, right? And they actually go down here talking about where they've gotten rid of police departments. So there's just like no sense in this article from anybody that this might not work, that they end, may end up with less safe streets, that they might end up with more and not less crime, more and not fewer murders. It just doesn't dawn on them. And now, as it's starting to dawn on them, they won't accept responsibility for it. It's somebody else's fault. It's the cop's fault. It's the black guy's fault. Here's another article. Council advances plan to dismantle Minneapolis Police Department. This is June 26, so it's not quite three weeks later than the other one. Minneapolis City Council on Friday unanimously, that means Bender voted for this, approved a proposal to change, change the city charter to allow police department to be dismantled following mass public criticism of law enforcement over the killing of George Floyd. The 12-0 vote is just the first step in a process then they have to go through uh, obstacles with the uh, November ballot. And we see, I hope that the Charter Commission will recognize the moment that we are in and take our offer of support. However, we can provide 
it to expedite this process so that voters have a chance to have their voices heard on this important question and this important moment in our city's history, Council President Lisa Bender said. Well, I think she's hearing from the people now, and she's not hearing what she expected to hear. She's not hearing, oh, gee, since you cut back on the police department, things are getting better. It's like, no, since you cut back on the police department, things are getting worse. And there's a bunch of other quotes here. There's Jeremiah Ellison again. Uh, the charter has been a barrier to the kinds of changes citizens have demanded. Well, what are the citizens? When did they demand that? You know, were they out in the street demanding that? The people out in the street were the, 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 the lawless people who were on the street doing the mostly peaceful protesting. Uh, the council member Steve Fletcher said the action is only a precondition to creating significant change. Yeah, significant change. Higher murder rate, higher burglary rate. <laughs> what, the, the, what, the arson rate's up 50%? That's significant change. You want significant change? You'll get significant change. Oh, God, because, you know, I just, you know, it's almost disgusting uh, just to read this. Mayor F Jacob Frey, uh, soy boy Frey, doesn't agree with abolishing it, but I guess he does limited power. There's not much he can do about it. So the city council has been running this show. They're the ones pushing this. Oh, and by the way, here's the chief of police that I've been talking about. This is the guy that they're trying to blame now. Uh, he's being pressed. You know, how come things are getting worse? What, what aren't you doing your job? <laughs> it's just it's just incredible. So that's where we're at yesterday. And that's what's going on in, uh, in Minneapolis. And you can see that there's just, uh, these progressives just can't, can't come to grips uh, with what's happening in their own city as a result of their own policies. Much of the violence has been concentrated in neighborhoods on the city's north side, council member Philippe Cunningham, who represents the fourth ward, said, where a 17-year-old boy was shot and killed Monday. Cunningham said two of his constituents were also recently wounded by stray bullets while sitting in their home. But despite the uptick in crime in his ward, Cunningham, who supports the creation of a new community safety agency to replace the police department, said it's particularly important now to start instituting some of those public health-based approaches to violence prevention. Recently, the council took more than $1 million from the police budget to hire, quote, violence interrupters to intervene and defuse potentially violent confrontations. Well, that's working well, isn't it? Is that why there's a 50% increase in arson? Is that why the murder rate is already what it was in the entirety of last year? Is that why there's more burglaries? I mean, this is, can't these people comprehend that it's their own policies that are causing the problem? What pro progressives always do in these situations is deny responsibility, blame other people, and then double down on their own policies. So is this guy who seems to understand something's not quite right, and who, who earlier in the other articles talked about maybe we should slow this process down, does he want to abandon the process? Hell no. Forge ahead. Double down. Progressives always double down. If we have these systems in place, we are getting ahead of the violence. That's why I've advocated so strongly for the violence interrupters. Because if they are interrupting the violence before the guns are being fired, then the MPD doesn't have to respond to that violence. If. If. You know, how are violence interrupters going to stop looting? How are violence interrupters going to start stop arson? How likely are violence interrupters to stop a murder? How likely is it that they can even be there to stop a murder? And that's why so many people get murdered. Cunningham also criticized some of his colleagues for seeming to waver on the promises they made earlier this year to transform the city's public safety system. So here's a guy who sort of seems to understand what's happening, but he's critical of his colleagues because they're getting cold feet. He wants to forge ahead. He wants to double down. Let's cut more from the budget. Let's hire more violence interrupters and social workers and 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 I don't I don't know who else who else they're, they're going to order. What I am sort of flabbergasted by right now is colleagues who a very short time ago were calling for abolition are now suggesting that we should be putting me more resources and funding into the MPD. Cunningham said, "Yeah, damn straight. <laughs> they, they cut the police force." They, they hamstrung them. They release prisoners when they get arrested. And now things are going haywire. 
And the people in their own wards are telling them they feel like they're being terrorized. But does that mean they should back off and change the policies? No, we've got to forge ahead. We, we're right. We're right. It's just the people and the criminals just don't seem to understand what we're trying to do. So what we need to do is just forge ahead. We need to double down because we're progressives and that's what we always do. Double down, double down, and double down again. If you look at what's happening in Minneapolis, it's clear that progressives just don't get it. They're incapable of understanding people. They're incapable of understanding the minds of their law-abiding citizens, no matter what their color is. And they're incapable of understanding the minds of criminals. There are criminals out there on the street. And if you change your behavior about how you handle criminals to coddle protesters, you know, it doesn't take much for a criminal to go out dressed all in black. And if he gets caught, you know, raise a fist and say he's part of BLM or Antifa and then get sprung free without bail by the court system. I mean, criminals often are stupid, but they're not that stupid. But progressives don't understand this. They don't understand the criminal mind. They don't understand the basic human mind. All they understand is other progressive minds because they all speak with one voice, like they're part of a commune or a hive or something. They all think alike. They all repeat the same chants. They all say the same things. They all do the same things. And they all double down. Progressives really do say the darndest things. And that's what we saw at this uh, Minneapolis City Council meeting. They're saying things that are uh, totally divorced from what they were saying earlier. They're asking why these things are happening when people told them they would happen if they pursued the policies they've been pursuing. So who do they blame? Themselves? No, never. They blame the police? Oh, they're not, they're not doing their job. They're not responding. And they blame the poor black police chief. But it's amazing that they have no sense of, of the world we live in, not just with the people. Don't they realize that there's this thing called the internet? The old Al Gore bond, remember it was created by Al Gore. Don't they realize people can go back just a couple of months in just one location, the archive of Minneapolis Public Radio, and see what they were saying back in June, early June, late June. Don't they realize that all this stuff is out there? Don't they realize it's going to be dug up? Don't they realize that they're going to look like total fools, total buffoons? because that's how they look. But they don't get it. They never get it, because they can never accept the fact that their policies are wrong. It, there must be something wrong with the people. And the people need to be re-educated. And if they can't be re-educated, they need to be eliminated. And we've seen that happen. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Uh, Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, as we confront the resistance, what you need to do is to stand tall and keep fighting.